Andrew, how are you? <laughs> I'm rocking and a rolling. I'm doing good. I had my cup of decaf coffee. I got one sitting in the pot ready to go after this. I'm rocking and a rolling. Did you box through? I mean, you did in the clip art, but should we? Should uh, should I? I do I, I get I an honorary? Can I throw something with you? Hold on. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll wait for you. We can do an honorary box throw to kick off the live stream. All I've got is my trash can. All right, three, two, one. <laughs> Now there's trash all over my studio. I almost knocked a picture off the wall. Is it a picture of someone important or Michael Myers? No, it's a picture of 30. It's a, it's a skull with 31 eyeballs and or 31 eye hole slots. And you put a sticker for each day leading up to Halloween. That's pretty cool. Yeah. My instant thought was, uh, a mask with 20 eyes in it. And I was like, is it a reference to a misfit song? Cause real quick, no, it is not one of the reasons I'm, I'm going to tell you, I don't know. Maybe I have told you this, but when I started the whole audio thing and watched a video, I don't know what video it was, but I watched a video and I swear you had a descendant shirt on in it. I think. Yeah. And I, I, and, I and wouldn't be surprised. That was the moment where I was like, I don't care what the hell this guy talks about. I'm watching his channel. <laughs> Descendants are one of my favorite bands of all time. And I think they were the last show that I went to. And I got sick as a dog because I don't know if you know this. Gutter punks don't really take care of themselves. And a lot of gutter punks listen to Descendants. So I got super sick. And that from was the, the, last show from I the smell at the concert. No, people were sick there. <laughs> oh, okay. I, 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 I thought they killed. were just like really bad BO all over the place. No, <laughs> no, no. It's like, that sounds more like an ICP concert than a, De a Descendants concert, but no hate. ICP I, 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 can't I can't speak about ICP because if I mentioned something, people would know where I'm from. Uh, really? Yeah. I'll end it. I'll stop there. There's been speculation <laughs> on where you're from. Like, I think I told yeah. somebody you were from Texas because that was like a stab at it. I don't even. Yeah. Tex I, I was from Texas. I'm from Alaska, from, from, uh, Michigan. Yeah. Fago. Tatooine. Yeah. Yeah. Naturally. <laughs> Naturally Tatooine. From, from Zeta Reticula. I've never, I've never understood that, but I don't, I think it's something I'm missing as far as like pop culture references go. So back in 2006, I was on tour and we went through Roswell, New Mexico on June 6th, 2006. So it was 666. And we went into one of the shops and we were just goofing. We're like, hey, where do we find the aliens? And the guy was like, well, do you want the grays? Do you want the greens? Do you want the Alpha Centaurians, the Zeta Reticulans? What kind of aliens are you looking for? And we're just like, wait, what? <laughs> I didn't realize there were so many different species. I thought it was the big grays that we that we all know yeah those are the only ones i've met i haven't met any of the other ones yeah there's a lot speaking of which i go off the rails a lot and i i swear like you and i we we know that we don't talk politics and i'm not going to but i do wonder what you think especially after seeing your i don't need this tom delong fender i don't need this tom delong fender <laughs> <laughs> But the whole U but the whole UFO hearings, like, well, what the hell is I, going on? Are they saving everything until like we need to come together? Is that what's happening? Like, all right, you fighting bunch of bags of D's, it's time to get together. We're going to tell you about the aliens now. So I'm go. This is going to tell you how incredibly jaded I am, how cynical I am. I want to. Be I'm going full on Fox Mulder. I want to believe what they're saying. But I know that it is just a distraction from something else. Something else is going on that they don't want us paying attention to. So they're like, let's do these hearings. Let's talk about this so that the headlines can say they admit they have alien bodies. And that'll be the headline as opposed to something that actually matters. I mean, a whistleblower on something of this level. I don't I just not to be. No, terrible I, I i don't think he would make it to the hearings i just don't see that no, happening but also, unless they're like okay you're on <laughs> but also he's not a whistleblower he went and got approval about what he could say that's not a whistleblower that's right. just a pr person 
Right. A whistleblower is somebody who says, I don't think what is happening is appropriate, legal, ethical, whatever it may be. So I am going to go, I am going to share this information with a disregard for what happens to me, what happens to my career. But this guy went through the PR department and got approval for what he could say. So, He's so not what, a whistleblower. So what you're saying is we are not going to be hanging out with Paul anytime soon. I would... That is one of my favorite movies, and I made my dad watch it. It is one of his favorite movies now. It's a great it's movie. It's incredible. I, yeah. Anything Simon Pegg, honestly, as, as long as it's Simon Pegg, and I can't remember his buddy's name that's in, you know. Um, Nick uh, Nick Frost. Thank you. Right? Nick, yes. That's cr- Yeah. Uh, yes. Anything that they do together, except for Hot Fuzz. I didn't really love that one, but it was fine. It was fine. That's a Every, hot take. Everything hot, else hot is good. Hot Fuzz is, is very well loved. And I was with, when I first saw Hot Fuzz, I didn't get it. I didn't love it. But rewatching it again, it's incredible. There's not a single bad movie they've made together. That love might, every single one. That might be what I need to do then, because I admittedly have not seen it since it came out. And of course, like an album that you hate at first, and then you hear it years later and you're like oh shit that's really good maybe that's mm-hmm. what i'm missing maybe that's the problem so absolutely I might, have, I might have to go back and and watch that but we we spoke you guys will hear some audio talk a little i'm sure but i like the whole point of this whole thing is to to not just go watch another podcast it's video or you know a full of that's what she said, joke, obscure Mike's video. But how about you get to know your creators, the hearts that might be inside of us, the souls that could be inside of us. Maybe we're trying to prove this right now. The souls that are blackened because they read every YouTube comment. Yeah, that is the truth. But we, uh, we got, to talking the other day about the nineties and how much better it was and judging by some of your pictures. Sorry, audience. Some of you are nineties kids. And I can tell (laughs) Michael Bauer. I know you're from the night. Well, no, you're a little bit younger than me, but it was, it was such better times full of mall rats and Simon Pegg movies and other Kevin Smith films and Quentin Tarantino films, which if you don't like, I'm ending this call. You good? I'm good. Okay. Tarantino. That's good. That's good. Uh, <laughs> but there, there, there's just so much, and we, we're we going to sound old, but there's just so much better stuff from that era. And it was simpler. And like we rode our bikes and listened to punk rock and watched cool movies and went to Blockbuster, like you said, and like all this stuff. So I'm like, before you touch base on, some of that stuff, so people get to know the possibly real banjo, or you could just fake the whole thing. Like, is there anything like that now? Since we've both established that we wish it was the '90s, is there anything now that even comes close to those peaks of pop culture and just freedom and feeling good? Because I I don't feel good that often. Yeah, I I think so. Yeah, I think I think it's. It's more difficult to achieve that, but I think there is still great art. I don't think we'll ever have a time again until the internet disappears and we all go back to the traditional media that we have those same pop culture important moments because everything is so segregated now. Everything is so fragmented. You have 10 different subcultures of punk as opposed to just rock music. You have 5,000 different streaming services as opposed to 10 channels over the air. So I don't think we'll have those same pop culture events, but I think there's still amazing art that's being made. And as far as recapturing that vibe of just going out and riding your bike, that's something that I worked on really hard because I was losing it a year ago. So I just, every Friday, I will walk to the grocery store. I don't take my phone. I just listen to pop punk or I'm listening to a summer playlist right now. Summer barbecue playlist from Apple Music. Rock on. And 
I'll go buy some apples because who wants to eat ice cream or pizza and- <laughs> or pizza? Yeah, you gosh, ha- you disgusting. hate pizza now. Yeah, it it's sucks. the worst. I don't mm. miss it at all. Yeah. Gosh, stupid so Italians. I, I, I think it's possible to uh, to achieve it. You just got to want to, and you need to leave your connected devices at home, which is, is a scary thought. It is, especially when you do the things that you and I and a whole lot of people watching this do. Like when you're trying to build an audience and you know, keep growing something you've created, like to leave your phone at home is, uh, it's even more scary, especially when you're growing and you want to respond to all the comments. If you leave your phone at home, you're not responding to anything. And then they're like, this guy sucks. He doesn't respond to anything. I'm not watching his channel anymore. See, I, th- I think that's a really dangerous mentality to have because I don't think any commenter should expect you to be on call 24-7. So going out and leaving your phone at home so you can have two hours or three hours away from being connected is extremely healthy. And then if you reply within one day, I think most people who leave a comment are like, oh my gosh, they actually responded. That's amazing. I agree. Now, I am talking about like, you know, on the way to a thousand subs mentality. That's kind of what it was like. You know, when you're really Mm -hmm. going all in, like once I get to a certain point, I can start to relax and let the videos do their own thing. But I finally got into a place where I will just check it in the morning and respond to some and be done. But it took a long time to get there. So I guess I was living a dangerous mentality of like, I've got to talk to these people because this is what I'm trying to do. And in defense of what you said, not one person has ever said you took too long to respond or where have you been? <laughs> what is wrong with you? So, yeah, I would. I thought about going flip phone quite a bit lately and then just having a tablet for the creator stuff to pull out here and there. But that's 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 a really tough thing to commit to as well. It's it's really hard. I tried that for a couple of weeks back and it must have been 2018 or 2019. Because it was before the pandemic, I was going into my office every day. And I desperately want to get away from a smartphone, but the convenience that we get from it is undeniable. The access to our mobile banking, the access to maps, the access to emails, the ability to take photos. I tried to develop a like a 1990s everyday carry. What would I need to carry to have all the functionality that I have? I would need a camera. I would need a disc man. I would need wired headphones. I would need a newspaper. I would need a watch. I would need a notebook. I would need a pen. I would need a callet. Just the amount of stuff that you would need to fully abandon a smartphone is difficult. And we uh, had dumb phones at the end of the 90s, right? So we would need our phone as well. Yeah. Okay. Couldn't remember if that was 2000 or if it was like mid 90s, late 90s. Yeah, towards the end of the 90s. I didn't get my first cell phone until 2003-ish, 2004. I think that's around the same time I did. And it was a nice silver flip phone. And since it was small, I thought it was just cool. Cool little just Oh, it's... (laughs) Now the bigger your phone is, the cooler you are. (sighs) And that's a problem that I wish I didn't have big hands. I would much rather use a small phone. But when you have that tiny little keyboard... It yeah, it is it is very difficult to do. Voice to text, my dude. Voice to text. Voice to text gets me in a lot of trouble. So (laughs) we're not like that. (laughs) I am the worst, especially being from Ohio. I'm like, all right, y'all, this is what we're going to do on today's show, and then it just says everything I did not want it to say, (laughs) and I have a bad habit of just hitting post while not looking at anything. So yeah, there's that. We, the nineties talk that we were talking about as well, like you mentioned blockbuster and I'm just curious, did you happen to watch for nostalgic reasons that show called blockbuster that was on Netflix for like a minute? No, I have not had a Netflix subscription since 2018, 2019. You are disconnecting. I, I canceled my very last streaming service two weeks ago. 
I have no video streaming services. All I pay for is Apple Music, YouTube Premium, and Amazon Prime. All right. Take us there. Why? Like, uh, no judgment, because I would love to do that. But how, why, and what's the benefits been so far? Because we're talking 90s. We want to go back. We want to take all of you back. (laughs) You're all coming back with us. Like, screw technology. We're done. It's kind of, it was kind of that. It was this... This overabundance of options, kind of this decision paralysis, I think people call it, where you would just open up Netflix and just have thousands of movies to select from, and you would end up spending... Every single person who has Netflix has experienced this. You scroll for 45 minutes. Oh, I'm going to watch something, and now I don't have time to watch anything, and I wasted 45 minutes. Yeah, that used to be my, my wife's night every single night. Yeah. So I decided, okay, I want to be much more intentional about what I'm watching because I'm just opening up this app to waste time. I want to make the actual decision. I have the urge to watch Mall Rats for the 1,527th time. I'm going to go grab the DVD and put it in. I like that intention. And the last streaming service that I had was Shudder. I was going to guess that just from the videos. (laughs) Yeah. I I loved Joe Bob Briggs, The Last Drive-In. I still do. I love that show with all of my heart. It was the last thing that I enjoyed on the internet in that kind of thing where it's this cultural event because it was sort of live. It it was pre-recorded, but they would live stream it at a specific time. So you would have all the joe bob briggs fans and darcy fans tweeting and just talking the horror movies they had a discord but the tech issues that shutter has got to be so bad that i just said i'm done i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give you any more money i i had been a subscriber for like six years and all i did was watch joe bob briggs so i would give them money throughout the entire year just for 12 episodes of this show and the tech was so bad that i said i'm done you lost me. I admittedly do that now with Apple TV because of Ted Lasso. Like I, I pay for it just for Ted Lasso and I can't yeah. help it. It's a great show, but it's yeah. How, how has it, how has it changed? Do you have more time now that you don't have streaming services or are you just pop it in physical media more? Yeah, I do find that I have more time. The, the first thing that I did before I canceled all my streaming was canceling cable. And that was just the greatest thing I ever did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just canceling all the legacy media was just, it, it frees up so much space in your mind. But now I have a set stack of DVDs that I want to watch. And right now I'm going through a bunch of sci-fi shows. So instead of thinking, I'm going to sit on the couch and scroll for 45 minutes till I find something I want to watch, then I'll watch five episodes of the big bang theory again because yes i like the big bang theory i watched every single episode yeah i I love that great show it it may not it may not be the greatest thing ever but i enjoy the heck out of it it's it's as far as sitcoms go it's it's up there with the greatest ones ever i mean just you know sometimes the majority is correct yeah (laughs) Yeah, that's something else that i i agree with 100 percent. popular doesn't necessarily mean bad no but (laughs) I liked Friends. I, w- I liked Friends too. Friends. Good show. Okay. So I know you you mentioned Simon Pegg. You love Simon Pegg. Have you seen Spaced? No. Is that fairly n- newer? That that was what he put out in the nineties with. Uh, oh gosh, why can't I remember his director's name? He did Baby Driver. Who's the director of Baby Driver? Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. It's a big name, right? Yeah, he, he's a famous director, and he did all of Simon Pegg's movies. All, Without all the of technology. the Cornetto trilogy. I could go grab it, but regardless. Yeah. He did a TV show. It was Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, and this director. And it was two seasons or Edgar two series. Wright. Edgar Wright. Thank you. Welcome. And it is incredible because you're talking about wanting to capture the 90s that first season is pretty much just here's a 90s reference here's a 90s reference here's a 90s reference here's an episode where we imagine that we're in resident evil here's us trying to rescue a dog that is framed in the sense of star wars it is just and 
it's such a fun show and it captures Simon Pegg's and Nick Frost's and Edgar Wright's entire personality. You need to watch that. You would love it. I, I'm getting so the way we do things is kind of the way you are doing your DVDs. We have uh, to to cut out the 45 minute searches. We have a set amount of shows we watch. So I don't care if you all judge me or not. Right now, the the sitcom that we watch most often is Reba, <laughs> because Van on Reba is one of the funniest characters in sitcom history. Fantastic. So Reba. Golden Girls, even though my wife's ran through it 40 times, I've never ran all the way through it. Uh, what what else? There, and then we've got Ted Lasso and that new Jason Siegel show, Shrinking, which is amazing. Gil, I know Gil loves that show, too. And uh, th- there's a few others. But when one knocks off, we got to find the new one. Like Frasier was Frasier took up a, a year or so. Big Bang Theory took up a year or two. You know, we do it like that. Like we've got one that we always put on. And then we've got, uh, you know, American Dad Cleveland show for 15 minutes before bed, like the one you can turn off and it doesn't matter if you start it up in the middle of an episode. So I will add, said Simon Pegg show, as soon as Reba and her, her redheaded ass gets out of my way, I will put Simon Pegg in her place. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll make it through in about a weekend because each season is six episodes, seven episodes, and they're 20 minutes each, 24 minutes each. The Reba theme song does not slap Michael. It is the most annoying song I have ever heard in my life. And me and my wife cringe if I don't pause it before she goes, my boots are planted in the past. I hate it so much. And my wife will like slap me in the arm if I don't pause it and skim through it. That it does not slap Michael. It doesn't. That's the end of that. Fringe. I bet Bandrew watched Fringe. I have never seen Fringe. It's good. I have also never watched Stargate SG-1. I've never seen Sopranos. Sopranos is right? solid. Yeah, that's what I hear. I'm, I'm currently re-watching a mix between Battlestar. I, I've watched that three times before, watching that again. I'm re-watching X-Files for the fourth, fifth time. And then I'm watching Warehouse 13 for the first time. I've never seen the X-Files. Not even one episode. It's very of the time. If you're trying to capture the 90s vibe, that's another one that you should watch. My wife says it's great. But uh, yeah, I just like I have have a love hate relationship with sci fi. Like I kind of love it. Like the Terminator series that was on TV. I was so pissed off when that ended. I was so mad because I loved it. Like I just thought it was great. But there's some sci fi topics I just absolutely love. But if it's if it's space, I pretty much only do Star Wars. I can't really dive into space okay. that much. Maybe that's the thing with sci-fi. Other stuff like Ex Machina. Am I saying that right? Ex Machina. Machina. That, yeah. that movie is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Like stuff like that, love. But some of the shows I have a hard time with. I haven't seen Battlestar Galactic either. Or um what's the Firefly? I know that's a cult. Oh, fire that's a huge, Firefly is I have a Firefly poster up in my bedroom. Yeah, I know that's a huge thing, but I just I have not dove into that at all. What else do we have? We we have a somebody mentioning Peep Show. That show is awesome. Super Hands, you're giving up crack, but you love crack. <laughs> that show is insane. That show is absolute insanity. That's uh that that's from one of our friends up north in Canada, Mr. Marty loves peep show. I didn't know you were into dirty stuff, Marty, but now I know. You've outed yourself. I don't even know what that's about. But if it's on Tubi, I have a quick piece of homework for it. No, you don't you can download Tubi. You don't have to pay for that. You can watch one thing I suggest on Tubi, right? Sure. Just like ten minutes of it. So you can either laugh really hard or say, I hate bark with a passion. It's called to die is hard. And it's, it's one of those two B movies that is a complete ripoff of what is obvious, a die hard ripoff to die is hard. I just want you to watch the first 10 minutes and, and uh, let me know your thoughts because the first 10 minutes are the funniest thing I've maybe ever seen in my life. Okay. Homework. Homework for band. All right, it's ri- it's written down on a pad of paper because I'm still escaping. That's so technology. physical. 
That's more physical than Peep Show. Yeah. Gil says his wife watches everything. I've not heard of everything. It sounds interesting, though. All right. So what else? Because I, I I get hooked on talking about the 90s. Since we've discussed it a little bit, what's the Beth? Beth what's the Beth Kevin Smith film? <laughs> So I think the best is probably Chasing Amy. My favorite, oh. my favorite is Mall Rats. My favorite is also Mall Rats. Yeah, I think the best in terms of performances, in terms of storyline, is Chasing Amy. It's just a much more interesting storyline. Mall Rats, it hit right at the perfect time for me. Everybody. All the, the critics hated it, but it was just perfect for a kid like me. Yeah, it was perfect for me. Every time I go into a mall, which is somewhat often, I'm going to one tomorrow to do some school shopping. I I go right back to mall rats. But I'm, I agree yeah. with you. Chasing Amy performance wise is the best because it was like mm -hmm. it wasn't so clerksy, mall ratty or, you know, Jay and Silent Bob strike backy. It was a little yeah. the tone was different. So performances, yes, but I think the best is dogma okay is i was just praying you weren't gonna say jersey girl because no I come through this screen no. and slap that i can't say it no i i i don't understand <laughs> you can but banjo chooses to stay clean which is admirable um <laughs> except when he goes to a descendant show that damn kid is back on the escalator again my heart be still my heart <laughs> that's he what, said did, damn <laughs> that's as far as it's uh, gonna get that's as far as it's gonna get you come close on the banjo says podcast but you but but it's close in the best way which by the way not not gonna lie and i'm, I'm not just like on here to, to kiss banjo's ass but that is like, I don't know why it's my favorite podcast, but it is. And it doesn't make it. I, I know. I know. It doesn't make any sense because like, why? Why is it my fate? Maybe it's just like, because you hit on everything that I want to know, but not look at myself, you know, <laughs> tech stuff, YouTube stuff, like the stuff I don't spend any time on. I'm like, well, Banjo will tell me about this shit. I'll just wait until Banjo tells me about it. He'll tell me about it on Monday morning. That's what Alan from Sound Speeds told me. He said, whenever I don't want to look something up, I'll just leave a comment knowing it's wrong or asking a question, and I let you do all the work. So, yeah, that, that would make sense. But thank you. That really means a lot. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and I'm not, you know, you know I, I, I think you and I, at least over the years, because we talk occasionally, it, I, we're not at the point where I need to be like, well, Banjo, oh, you're the best. You're just the greatest. You don't want to hear that shit anyways. But legitimately, that that is, it's <laughs> it's such a good podcast. And I, and I guess in the same right, Tom Buck's podcast is also good. And Chris Curran's is really good. And so, yeah, it boils back down to the interest. But still. There's I, I so don't, many good shows, yeah. Yeah, but Monday morning I wake up and I'm like, all right, I need to learn about the tech world today and, uh, you know, what what YouTube or other streaming sites are doing wrong or right or this or the other. <laughs> Someone earlier said, you both better be on cheap mics. Sorry, we're not. It's uh, the Louton Audio LS208. I don't just love cheap mics. Like, I'm never getting rid of this because I just like the way it sounds in my voice. I just like cheap mics. They're exciting to me when they sound good, but I still like, you know, if Banjo was like, Hey, I'm going to send you my, my, my highest price Neumann. I'm like, well, I guess if you got to send it, you got to send it. Well, oh, I don't know. Gosh, oh no. What am I going to do? Don't do it. I'll send you my copy of Jersey girl for it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I used to own the DVD for Jersey girl. I don't think I do anymore. I don't think it's awful, awful, but it's the worst of, uh, it's the worst of his. Yeah. And, and then the other one that, of his that I love that I know people hate is Zach and Miri make a porno because... I love that one. I, as Kevin Smith said, that was him trying to make a Judd Apatow movie. Mm -hmm. But I loved that movie. Me too. Still do. It, it's, it, was, it was extremely endearing to see Jason Mewes do something else and, yeah. and do it well. Lester the molester cock and stuff. Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, we can have a porn name? My name will be Pete Jones. <laughs> Such a great movie. 
I have quoted that to so many people. They don't know what it's from. They're like, what are you saying? You're a lunatic. Uh, what are you talking about? That that's I think that's a I think that's a nineties thing as well. Like the fact that it's so I know that was early two thousands, but that that stuff is so ingrained in us that we can't help but make references. I make movie references all the time and no one has a clue what I'm talking about. I'm really bad about Dave Chappelle references, but like the, the more <clears throat> obscure ones, sorry. Uh, you know, I, I just, it, when I hear something that relates to something, pop culture, I just, I spew it out. I spew it from my mouth and I can't help it. Well, I think a lot of us who grew up in the nineties struggled to, convey our ideas or express ourselves we didn't have and, the internet well we did yeah but. And relating through movies and pop culture is kind of it made that a lot easier at least for somebody like me maybe i'm just projecting i don't know no. I, I don't know how to behave most times so i'll just reference a movie and use a quote yeah i, I think that it, it's not just you, because obviously it's me. So if it's us two, you extrapolate the numbers out. It's everybody that grew up in the 90s. But I, sometimes I'll just randomly, I'm going to cuss people. I'm sorry. And it's not to be cool. But like sometimes I'll just walk in the break room at work. And if someone's eating Jimmy John's or something, I don't know if you'll get the reference, but I'll just look at them and be like, how's it taste, motherfucker? <laughs> like, <laughs> which is, wait, <laughs> how, how's it? Uh, is that Chappelle? Yeah. Samuel Jackson beer. It's my oh, beer. It'll, it'll get you drunk. You'll be pecking <laughs> fat chicks in no time. Yes. Nailed it. You ain't seen. What's the shark Jackie movie? Brown, Star Wars. Deep Dang. blue sea. They Deep blue sea. Me. That's it. Uh, an that's effing it. shark ate me. Yes. I can't help it. It just, it's, it pours out. Gil wants to know what our favorite 90s game is. <laughs> <laughs> shark ate me. Fucking shark oh. ate me, dude. <laughs> shark ate me. And then that always transitions me to like, if if anybody, I've been in situations where a brother's been given his sister crap, and I'm always like, if anybody's going to my sister, it's going to be me. <laughs> oh, no. Just goes on and on. Anyways, favorite '90s game. It's gone off. I knew it would go off the rails. I mean, it's just, it was destiny. This is exactly what I was uh, hoping for. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I, I'm sweating. Talking audio gets, somebody asked what our favorite five mics is, and, and I don't care to answer, but sometimes it's like, you know, audio is awesome. Microphones are awesome. But so is just forgetting about it for a day or a night. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. If every single one of these interview or not interviews, but you know, live streams was was all about audio, not to run everybody off, but eh, get a little stale. Like, yeah, we we just said a effing shark ate me. When's the last Did time you, you heard expect that? that? Yeah. yeah. When you clicked on a, a a live stream from a couple of audio people, did you expect to hear somebody say a shark ate me? Yeah. And Keep why? me on your toes. Because fuck them, that's why. <laughs> Pop copy. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> that, that was the first time I saw Bill Burr, I think. And I yeah. didn't realize it until many years later. I was like, wait a second. That was Bill Burr. That was he Bill was Burr, there. who I, you know, since we were talking pop culture, one of my favorite scenes in anything I've seen in a long time. I don't know if you watched The Mandalorian season two, maybe. But Bill mm -hmm. Burr, like was a total badass in, in one of those episodes. He was in like one or two episodes. He was so good. But anyways, Bandry, what's your favorite 90s game? Oh, gosh, that is difficult. It's got to be one of two. Um, I already referenced it once, but Le Resident Leisure Evil. Shoot. <laughs> Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I heard somebody <laughs> reference that the other day. I have no idea what that is. It was like, it was like bordering on X-rated playstation game oh okay yeah anyways yeah sure let's go with that but sure. also i guess i guess a number two would be either resident evil which was super important for me or final fantasy 7 those were the two that took up the most of my time what about you similar which i've already told you but resident evil because it was just i don't i don't know was it one of the first horror games 
It was my first survival horror game. It was Mine too. pretty early. Yeah, because it was on PlayStation 1. That's pretty early. Sega Saturn version of, of uh, Resident Evil here. Oh, yeah. Sega Saturn. I didn't have one. I wished I did, though. But I had a buddy who was excited every time he... Thing he was like, come play Dreamcast. Okay, um, <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, but yeah, it, Resident Evil and Secret of Mana, Mana. I don't know. It was a Super Nintendo SNES game in the mold. I think it was made by the makers of Final Fantasy. So it was one of those RPG, more action RPG games. But and I got to throw a third one out because like Zelda: a Link to the Past is just really high up there that was such a good game i never played that the only zelda i ever played was Link's awakening i think was that, that was on nes maybe that's the I one it, was it the gold cover the gold i probably said the wrong title yeah it was the nes cartridge and it had a gold uh color thing on it sticker on it now that's going to drive and that me was nuts. where i started I making was stickers it. I think that was it, but I'm not sure now. <clears throat> Zelda games. Oh, Driver yeah. on the, uh, that was the PS1, Doom 2, Chrono Trigger, and Super Metroid. Not seeing a single 007 on here. So, oh, Gil says Secret of Man. I'm not the only one. Nice. Okay. Link's Awakening was Game Boy. Okay, then I had it on Game Boy. That was so, what it was. So Link to the Past, was I right on that one? I think it was uh, Super NES? Maybe? Wait a second. I left off any Pokemon. Because I did have a Game Boy, and I had one of the Pokemons. I think it was blue. I, I don't know. I don't I remember. I played no Pokemon games. Which I never got into Pokemon. I think it was just before my time so it didn't happen barely favorite 90s movie if you had to pick one or a top five if you have them on the top of your mind oh gosh okay number one probably does have to be mall rats that is legitimately the most watched movie that i have because it's comfort food for me i have it downloaded on my ipad i will just turn it on and fall asleep to it so that is my number one. Number two is probably Event Horizon. Ah. That one, I know it doesn't hold up. People laugh at it now, but back when I saw it, I probably saw it way too young. That, that movie was incredible. I don't think I've seen it. Who's in right, it? We're going Sam Neill. I have not seen it. That's the thing that's absolutely nuts. Like Sam Neill has done some really weird movies. He did he did uh In the Mouth of Madness, was it? Which was 80s or 90s, early 90s, and it is just one of the most insane over the top kind of dreamlike horror films and then of course, Event Horizon. Kind of the same thing. I don't know if I have three more that I can think of. I'll, I'll throw in Super Mario Brothers. I know it's bad. I know it's terrible. But when I saw that as a kid, I loved it. Really? I loved it. Even so as a I kid, say, I was like, this is trash. Even, even, even as a kid, I loved it. It's like, that is not a, huge, a Goomba. <laughs> no, dude, I was a huge fan of John Leguizamo. I like John Leguizamo. I liked Spawn, because for that matter. I, I, I saw him in Spawn. I think... Th I don't know what the order of movies I saw him in was, but I, saw, I know I saw Spawn after a lot of the others, but I think the first one may have been The Pest. I which didn't see is, it, but I know what it is. <laughs> Jeff Jones, is it? Jeffrey Jones, the principal from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, he's yeah. A, he's a white supremacist manhunter, and he drops John Leguizamo on an island and hunts him. And it is it's just insanity. Yes, FNS Wrestling. Yes. Um, did you happen to watch the Violent Night movie that came out last Christmas or the one before? I, I saw it in the theaters, but it was a really small theater and my eyes are bad. So I struggled to see a lot of it. 
Leguizamo was brutally terrible in that, and it it, it <laughs> kind of crushed my soul a little bit. Like I know that his role wasn't meant to have any kind of. There was none of these roles were going to get awards by any means, but I was just like, dude, he is overplaying the shit out of the bad yeah. guy, <laughs> and I don't know <laughs> why because he's been good. He's he's been good before. He's done cop dramas where he's great, but in that movie, I was like. God, what happened to John Leguizamo? It was bad. Really bad. I'm sure he was just having fun. Just like, let's see. It, it, I mean, the entire premise is absolutely insane. So he's yes. probably just saying, let's let's go over the top and try to make it as goofy as possible. Yeah. Let me go full Nicolas Cage on this movie. Yeah. Oh, talking about Nicolas Cage, I think another one, I loved this, The Rock. Oh, me. My I wife say, had never seen it, and I just made her, like, forcefully held her eyes open and made her watch The Rock with me, like, a month ago. It's so good. It really So, is. that would probably be my act. Oh, gosh. And then we got to do Speed. Saw Speed at a drive-in theater. Good times. Okay. And it was a good what, movie. What would your top five be? Uh, It's kind of a tie for number one, because you mentioned falling to sleep to mall rats. And that's, Mm -hmm. that is 100% a nineties, early two thousands kid thing going to sleep to movies. Yes. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. Um, happy Gilmore and Pulp Fiction are like, Oh my gosh. Hand in hand for me. Cause happy Gilmore. I could watch. That was my sleep movie for years. And then my wake up at noon movie was Pulp Fiction. So (laughs) those two are definitely like, top tier for me i gotta i'll just throw names out like i love dogma and i Mm -hmm. die hard and that might be where it ends because i can't think of anything that's just that overly important there's a lot of them the usual suspects swimming with sharks oddly enough any other tarantino movie it's pretty much up there but usual usual suspects blew me away I didn't get into any of those movies. Maybe I was just a bit too young. Yeah, The Fugitive also. Jurassic Park. How could I forget Jurassic Park? A I good one. how I left off any Adam Sandler movies. Billy Madison. I thought that was one of the funniest things that ever existed. Agreed. Yeah, Veronica Vaughn is one piece of ace. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to be your pants. Stop yelling on the bus. <laughs> a Doyle does indeed rule. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh geez, they keep coming to me. Uh Lebowski. Big Lebowski. Good call. Yeah, Big Lebowski. What's the Chris Farley, David Spade, I Tommy Boy? Hate that movie. You hate, hate that movie. I loved that movie. Oh my yeah. goodness gracious. I probably Mr. would have if I'd have watched goodness. it, but I didn't watch it until a few years ago. And it just to me the the brain oh, of yeah. comedy didn't quite make it through. No. <laughs> Certainly not. At that time. There are so many great 90s movies. Very hard to pick. Well, yeah, and and now you've got the oversaturation of, like, Marvel. And I admit, I was into the Marvel stuff, like, a good bit. Like, I didn't miss one when they came out, but there was just a point, like a turning point where it's like, man, they need to slow down. I don't have the Mm -hmm. time in my life to keep up with this. And the quality is waning. Not not to be gross, but they like blew their wad too quick with like the end game and Thanos stuff. Schindler's List. Hmm. I have not seen it, but I don't know if I ever will, Bill. <laughs> I, I saw that once and that was enough. Yeah, I don't I I never mm. <laughs> There's that's not one where you think I really want to unwind by watching right. Schindler's list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Well, I'm gonna that's, eat dinner. That's like saying <laughs> watch I Schindler's had a really List rough week. Yeah, I'm going to watch Schindler's List, follow it up by The Passion of the Christ. <laughs> this will be a really cheery Friday night. Uh, I was going to say I was going to follow it up with a little mind kimpf in, in bed. Like. Oh, God. <laughs> you in a different uh, direction. Gosh, oh, dang God. it. Yeah, I should have. I totally should have went the other way or like Bauer said earlier, like Schindler's List and then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles before I go to sleep. Oof. Uh, disturbing but excellent. There are there are lots of yeah. I mean, I I used to like getting disturbed, ooh, and now I just don't. So my heart is too tender since I had children. I uh, 
Yeah, I, I can't even watch horror movies. And okay, Army of Darkness. Got to throw that out there. Almost forgot. That's a good one. That's a great one. Oh Is gosh, it? Idle Hands. Idle Hands 90s is yeah horror film. That's, That's a good, good one. Stuff. Yeah, and Scream was really good for the time too. It, it's still really good. I rewatched uh, yeah. that a couple of years ago, and then I watched it again. I think last year. Speaking really of, a good movie. It is. And speaking of Matthew Lillard, tell me that you've seen SLC Punk. That that is one of the most important movies for me in middle school. Yes. Absolutely loved it. Yeah. Breaks your heart. Breaks your heart. It breaks your heart. But at the same time, there's nothing like watching Jason Siegel in a polo shirt just kicking ass. Yeah. <laughs> that was his first role, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. And he won he won my heart there. How, all the way, you know, and I watched How I Met Your Mother and loved every single moment of that show as well. <laughs> there's a there's a line from that that I quote kind of infrequently, but whenever I have a shiny surface, I say, there's a movie on there. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a test to see if I'm going to like this person. Yes, Starship Troopers as well. Gosh, how could I forget that? That was very important for many reasons, and hackers hack the planet. I liked hackers. Gosh. David's picture almost looked like he was on the hackers poster. Just a little bit. Maybe so. Just a little bit. I was shaking my head to Starship, Starship, Starship Troopers, and I realized, never seen it. Why am I shaking my head? What's going on here? I'm like, yeah, so, Starship, no. Didn't see it. The, the reason why I love it I loved it as a kid for many reasons. There are parts of the tape that would get worn out. Make of that what you will. But it was also a really bloody action movie. And looking back at it now, it's incredibly satirical. Because you have this over-the-top militant film mixed with this over-the-top violence. And then... Whoever did the casting casted the most beautiful people you could find. And it just, it shouldn't work. But because it's satire, it is incredible. I need you to watch You definitely it. need to watch that. That that sounds like it is completely 100% up my alley. It, it got a lot of backlash, apparently, when it came out. People said, oh, this is pro-fascist. It's like, <laughs> they're making fun of the entire thing. Are you nuts? Do you not get that? That must have been a recent comment then. <laughs> oh, no. This this was 97, 98 when that came out. Oh, I don't recall yeah. that many people analyzing back then. Oh, the, every the, little there thing. Wasn't, there, wasn't many, uh, <laughs> there wasn't many people analyzing it, but... <laughs> Thank you, fool! Yes. <laughs> the Great Salt Lake it makes things buoyant. <laughs> Gosh dang it. I see, it. this this stream has just turned into a references thing. Which We're just saying, I remember just that. Fun. I remember that. Fun. And that, that led me to Mars Attacks. Who doesn't love Mars Attacks? Red Letter Media. They really disliked Mars oh, Attacks. Oh, yeah. Yes, they did. I recall yeah. that vaguely, but I do recall it. Somebody did ask, uh, probably more of a question for you. Where'd it go? It was something to do with an, an SE mic and a Mojave mic. Oh. Do, you, do you even want Eric me to find it? Eric asks the SE V7 versus the Mojave MAD. I'm going to give the most boring answer that I give to most people. Which one do you like the sound of better? Because those are very different sounding microphones. The V7 is neutral. It's a little bit tamer. The MAD is so bright. It is an incredibly bright microphone, so that's quite a. Contrast. Do you want a very bright mic, or do you want something that's kind of neutral? It's like when people say SM7B or Presonus PD70. Like, or, <laughs> don't, <laughs> I don't know. Like, are you are you uh, are James Earl Jones, or are you the girl from Chasing Amy? That's that's a. <laughs> oh gosh, what was her name? Uh, Joey Lauren Adams. That yes. Is. That's another thing that I do. Uh, sorry, again, I'm going to curse and it's going to be a bad one. So be prepared. Anytime anyone makes me bad, I go, you fucker. <laughs> it's like one of the best one-liners ever. 
<laughs> I can just imagine you saying that to everybody at your day job. In that tone. Yeah. And I'm a director at my day job. It's probably really dangerous for me to keep using pop culture lines where I work, but yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Always wondered what type of hoodies Bandrew wears. That is a very personal question, but I mean, that's, yeah. up, to you. that's up to you if you want to answer that one. That's de- that's kind of deep. I think I've actually disclosed this somewhere. I don't remember where. It may have been in a video on the Bandrew Scott channel. When it's a bit warmer, I wear hoodies from Huckberry. It's the Flint and Tinder brand. They're Sounds called 10-year hoodies, and they're made in the USA. They are ungodly expensive, but if you care about buying made in the USA, they do that. This is an American giant hoodie because this is much thinner, so I can wear it and not die. Summer hoodie. Yeah, a summer hoodie. It's exactly. A summer hoodie. Nobody because God forbid you see my arms. Nobody's ever asked me those questions, to which I would always respond, khakis. Khakis. Hey, Bark, what kind of hoodies do you wear? I don't. I'm hot-blooded. Check it and see. Okay. <laughs> I just can't wear. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm obviously just a little bit overweight. By a little bit, I'm, I mean, not a ton. But I get hot. It gets really warm. So I, I, I tend to wear T-shirts and thongs all day long, around the clock. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Turn around and make them clap, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Which Whoopsie, (laughs) whoopsie, shouldn't have said that. That's inappropriate. (laughs) Are you sure you're drinking decaf? (laughs) Uh, This is just water. I I mean, vodka. I mean, crap water. Uh, No, You, you really did completely quit drinking, correct? Yeah. Like, I have not had a sip of booze since January 2nd, 2015. That is crazy amazing. And I and I am, uh, even though I'm sipping on a drink, I am not a fan of the alcohol. I just, I used to be until I hit mm-hmm. about 22, 23, 25. Let's call it 25. But I, I really, I like the taste of a beer just for the same reason you're drinking a decaf coffee as we speak. Like, it tastes good. I have no intention yeah. on ever getting drunk again in my life, nor do I like the taste of liquor. I just, I don't like alcohol. I just like, maybe I should be having an O'Doul's. Then maybe that's what I should be doing rather than a beer with a little bit of alcohol in it. But L. Yeah, I didn't have my first drink until I was 23. That's late. Th- then I went ham. <laughs> that's how that goes. Did you, yeah. did you, did you have like restrictions until you were an adult or that's just how it worked out? That's just how it worked out. I drank way too early. I was sipping on Boone's yeah. farm. As soon as I was able to grow a mustache, <laughs> like, give me some Boone's farm, somebody. Yeah. I was like fucking, Oh, oh, oh my God. Said, whoa, oh, oh my no. God. Oh, Fuck. Oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> I, I was all straight edge growing up. I had, I, I had, I had planned. I can't believe. I had planned on like we're doing uh, ISO Back. recording. We have we have ISO recording, so I had totally planned on like uploading this and then ending the live stream because let's face it, live streams just don't get pushed. So I was just going to push it out as an upload. Mm-hmm. I will. I can totally edit out that very naughty word that you said if need. Yeah, be. just just <laughs> just replace a a duck quacking for that. Uh, or or oh one of those old gracious. 1940s car horns. Yeah. There you go. Gosh, that just came right out. <laughs> Oops. That is what she said. Whoopsie dipsy. That is what she said. Uh, it happens. Trust, uh, we are religious men, by the way. We don't mean to say these words. I mean, you're, uh, I, you, you follow L. Ron Hubbard just like I do, right? Sure. <laughs> sure. Let's go. <laughs> sure, buddy. Oh crap! Sure, <laughs> thanks, Eric. Last... <laughs> just abandon ship. <laughs> pull up, pull up. Uh, pull out, pull out. Not pull up. It's pull out. Sure, sure, sure. That too. Yeah. Uh, eats. Oh no, that's that's old. Oh, Use one of the sound pads from. Oh God. 
Yeah. Uh, it's getting warm in here. Somebody mentioned somebody mentioned the Donner Procaster clone. That's that's a good transition out of that. Oh no. Is is there any okay? <clears throat> what I just just because now I'm I'm curious by a little bit. I saw your road, what is that called? The A1 steak sauce? What is it? Yeah. The yeah. road AI1. That was pretty cool. I had no idea yeah. that, that could be done, which gave me, me hope neither. for the Donner, but not really. Um, how the heck, what, one, how in the world did you find that information and pull that out? That's an old interface, right? That's like a 2015, yeah, 16. Yeah, I, I, rev- I, I reviewed that probably five or six years ago. So I've been going through all of my comments and responding to them. If I don't know the answer, I will do a test. And somebody asks, do I need the cloud lifter with the <laughs> do I need a cloud lifter with the AI one <laughs> and the Rode Procaster? So I pulled out the devices and started testing them, did a bunch of recording over two days. And then I went to download the specs off of Rode site. And I looked at they said six plus sixty dB of gain. And I said, what the heck? So I just, I checked for firmware updates and they had it. And I said, I better make a video about this. So, and you did, and it was, it was an interesting one. Sometimes those quick offshoots of information and just the demonstration, because I've looked at that interface for years. I just like the form factor, like, and I know it's solid. So you did that and I was like, dang it. Am I going to have to buy this thing now? Just because you know like now it actually is uh it's almost remodernized with them doing that did you hear any noise at all any i'm sure you would have mentioned it but i i didn't hear any significant change in the noise floor it's absolutely nuts that being said has there been a device interface wise that has been released in the last year or two that you would say well, I don't know. Is there anything you would vouch for that's came out in the last year or two interface wise that's kind of taken you aback, I guess? Because I feel like interface. everything's slowing down. It's like, to me, it's slowing down a little bit. Like it's summer and the economy is different. People aren't buying like they were. So I just yeah. feel like it's kind of creeped a little bit. As far as the interfaces, the few that have come out that stand out, it's less of an interface, the Roadcaster Pro 2, that's an obvious choice. But the Lewitt Connect 6 has a lot that I like, but one glaring downside for me, that's the lack of an instrument input. There's the Focusrite Vocaster stuff, pretty good. But nothing has really usurped what I already use, so... You're right. I'm not making any changes. Yeah, and it would probably take a lot to get you to even make a change. I'm using the Vocaster devices just because I, I don't know. There's just something easy <clears throat> and nice about them. I don't. The form factor is okay. I I have the one and the two. Why I don't know. The one I usually use for obscure mic videos, and the two, I have people that come podcast in my studio. Sharks with freaking lasers on their head. Um, <laughs> Austin Power. That's another '90s one that's incredible. <laughs> Couldn't help Men it. in Black. Uh, oh my I didn't gosh. like that. Didn't like that. Didn't love Men oh, in Black. I don't know why. Important to me. Yeah, I am Legend. Speaking of Will Smith, I love that one. Don't know why. Okay. That's a good one though. But yeah, I, I like the Vocaster line. But I'm really. I don't know if you ever watch Hank at Free Podcast Tools. <laughs> Howdy, Hank, out there somewhere. He's a great guy. But he hey, he Hank. posted this. Uh, he posted a video about a sure release and I like the portable crap and it's a little MVX2U, which is an updated version. That thing looks so freaking cool. And it looks like a cigarette, like a car, uh, a phone charger. Like it just looks kind of pluggish. Gil knows what I'm talking about with the plugs. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) It's you'll see on a video that's, that's really soon what I mean by plugs. Anyways, where's it at? Uh Maybe I should just get it out. Hey, I don't need to be vague. I, I did a mic. It's a member's early release, but it looks like a butt plug. 100%. Okay. Like it, it that's exactly what it looks like. But anyways, yikes. yikes. Yeah. And, and everybody 
that has seen it has said the same thing. Like, you know what that looks like, right? And I'm like, I mean, yeah, but I didn't make it. So it's, it's, it's not me anyways. Yeah. That sure MVX to you. That's really the only thing I'm excited about. And ever since Hank busted them out on that coming out, they haven't released it. I don't know if they were like, Nope, not doing it now. Mm -mm. Nope. You ruined it. Well, I, I hope <laughs> that a leak doesn't destroy an entire production. Like cycle. That, that would be nuts. Yeah, it would be. Well, now we're not going to do it. Yeah. Hmm. You made us I mad. can't imagine a corporation doing that. <laughs> you never know. I, I need to make a follow-up video on the Vocaster since you can now adjust the processing, right? Can you? I think, I think somebody mentioned that in oh. one of my comments. There's, pr I think there's a firmware that allows you to adjust the processing settings. So it's not just on or off or one of the four presets that would add a lot of value to interface. Well, I mean, the one is 99 bucks again, and the two is 150. And I, I just, I think that's an absolutely insane value for what these things do. That would, yeah. that would be great. That would be yeah, nineties level badassery right there. I'm going to have to. I don't ever look for firmware updates. I'm the biggest sham of an audio enthusiast of all time. I would have never found that Rode A1 device's firmware update. I'd been using like ICQ I, level firmware. No, here's the thing. That update has been out for a year and a half. Oh. It's been out for a year and a half. I just found it because I was answering a question. So but had you I found it. I did, yeah. But if I had not been answering that question, if somebody didn't ask me that question, I wouldn't have found it. So I'm just as much of a sham as you. Yeah. To be fair, what you use on the daily probably doesn't really need, or you check for firmware update, up, updates often. Okay, yeah. I I do update the X8 because I kind of need to. That's a much more complicated device. Yeah. I'll ask a question because I'm curious because I know you love the SM7B and you know that I like it, but don't love it. Has anything, uh, you know, if we didn't do what we do, would the SM7B still be the one mic that you would take with you if you were leaving on a spaceship tomorrow with Paul? Probably. I would say U67, but I don't want to take something that's tube on a yeah. spaceship because that's going to burn out and break. So I'm going 7B. Yeah. That, that makes good sense. You need longevity. Yeah. I was it's got to last me forever. The pure tube sounds glorious on your <clears throat> voice, but for the same reasons. I Yeah, and I, I've i got this freaking thing. I'm so angry. I, I hate, hate tube mics, officially. Now, granted, mm. I'm, I'm the, the Behringer version of your show. But this massive sucker... It's a Behringer T1. It is. Behringer made a tube mic? This is the second one I've had. I've done one video on one of the Behringer tube mics. Now, these are, I, I don't know if I can call them vintage yet, but this little uh, Alpha Centaurian looking thing is, uh, yeah, it's massive. It's huge. And guess what? It's an electric. It has a 16 millimeter electric capsule in there. Which makes no freaking sense at all. What the? Or to fuck? quote Bandrew, it makes no fucking sense at all. Hey, <laughs> I said nothing of the sort. <laughs> it's a malicious lie. Malicious lie. Nothing but lies. Oh, God. Okay. Where I'm using Ecamm, these super chats don't come through, so I got to find them. Thank you, Liberty Dude. But this, yeah, uh, I bought this and it was staticky as heck. And I replaced the tube in it. I got a tube from Sweetwater. It was an Electro Harmonix or whatever, Harmonix tube. And it sounded actually surprisingly great. And I was like, this is awesome. And because of the way that I am and do stuff, you know, it, it's listed for sale. And when it sells, when it sells, uh, I'll review it right before I ship it out. So this thing sells this massive forehead shaped thing. Freaking. Either the tube went bad or my cord went bad. Like it's staticky again when it wasn't. And I just replaced the tube like two months ago. And I'm like, do I really ever want to mess with tube mics? Cause they just, the cords and the power source and all that stuff. And it's like, 
it's so frustrating yeah. to even mess with when you can just throw a freaking fine on a boom arm and, and, and do a podcast or whatever. It's I, yeah, I had the exact same realization when I had my issue with the manly reference cardioid, I just decided, or I realized why the market moved away from tube, why they went to solid state, the reliability, the lack of cost to upkeep and the noise, the noise performance is significantly better on the majority yeah. of solid state mics. But yeah. then you run into something like the pure tube. You run into something like the U67 and you say, oh, okay, yeah, I get it. They don't sound great because they're tube mics. They just sound great and they happen to be tube mics. Yeah, I think, I think that's there's right. a lot of romanticism around tubes and... They can sound a bunch of different ways. There are great sounding tube mics and terrible sounding tube mics. So it shouldn't be purchased because, oh, it's a tube mic. It's going to make me sound 3D. As I've heard some people describe it, I don't hear that. I don't have those golden ears. No. But if you think it sounds good and it happens to be a tube mic, yeah. go for it. Yeah. Like the Lewitt Pure Tube sounds fantastic on your voice, but... I can guarantee there's probably five other ones that are really, really in line with that sound that are not tube mics. So then you got yeah. the mono price tube mic, which I was surprised that you reviewed. That sounds like. Did it? Mm, oh, yeah. gosh. I forgot that I did that. Yeah. R rusty tin can mono price, which I, I, I give it some credit. It's cheap and a capsule change will do a lot for it, but still, mm -hmm. you know, people are going to buy that thinking I'm going to get that tube warmth and that 3D sound, and it's just not always that simple. Yeah. We got a question from Eric. Ethos versus SM7B in untreated space. From Banders Reviews, the SM7B had a lot of noise in the untreated test. Seemed worse than the Ethos. Thoughts? I have a lot of head injuries, so <laughs> so I don't remember stuff that well, which is why I include all the tests that I do. I do know the SM7B as far as room rejection in my broadcast dynamic microphone comparison video, it ranked near the bottom. So a lot of people say the 7B is the best at background noise rejection. It's not. It's kind of bad at that compared to a lot of other broadcast dynamics. So I wouldn't be surprised if it is similar to the ethos, but at the same time, if I recall, remember, I have a lot of head injuries growing up, don't remember crap, but I think I've seen a number of comments about the ethos that people have issues with it being picking up a bit too much background noise. I would need to do a side-by-side -side comparison and, and a number of tests to actually give you an answer but both of them are not going to be ideal for a completely untreated room. I would go as far to say that this end address condenser has better background rejection than the SM7B. Not many of them, but this I, one I in particular is pretty good. It's pretty impressive. But yeah, that's, that is one of the things I don't love about the SM7B, but has your opinion? There we go. Has your opinion changed on the PodMic XLR? Does it, do they mean USB or the XLR after review? Oh no. After reviewing the PodMic USB. Um, not really. I th so I have seen a lot of people give the PodMic XLR a lot of hate. It's not the greatest sounding microphone, but I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people have made it seem lately. I think it's a perfectly tolerable microphone. And four years ago, three years ago, when it came out, $100 for a broadcast dynamic, a broadcast-looking dynamic was, it was the first one. So it was a bit of excitement. Yeah. And it takes processing fairly well. Like, it's, it's, yeah. it's kind of, it doesn't have a quality that is just flat out, like, oh, God, this thing is harsh. It's just kind of thin. It just needs a little, mm -hmm. it just needs a little umph to it. And it sounds pretty yeah. decent. So I don't think it's a terrible microphone at all. No. No. If you're not going to process it, maybe. Not the greatest. But like but. I say in most of my reviews nowadays of these affordable broadcast microphones, the handheld dynamics sound better. Most of the time. So 
unless you need that form factor, the handheld dynamics is going to are going to perform better. Or they seem to sound better, in my opinion. I'll put it that way. Have we ever got an answer to the lifelong question of what is a broadcast dynamic, really? No. (laughs) I, I don't think there is a proper answer to that. My thoughts would be, it's something that's going to sound good on a wide range of people. It's probably going to have some kind of filtering to allow you to get closer to it without getting an exorbitant amount of proximity effect and maybe have some kind of onboard filtering, maybe be pretty decent at background noise rejection, but at the same time, 7B, not the best at that. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I think, I think it's marketing. I think, I think you kind of, I mean, if, if you were going to brand it, a broadcast dynamic for any reason. I think the filters certainly help the case. Um, the the RE20 is at least actually large diaphragm, I believe. It is a little bigger than most, but especially the Amazon variety broadcast dynamic mics and some name brands, those capsules are the same thing that are in the handhelds. Like they just have the look. And that's that's always confused me. Yeah. Dale, how are you doing, by the way? It's been a minute since I talked to you. Dale's, yeah, Dale's a great guy. That's literally like the first follower I can remember commenting on everything I've ever done. Highly appreciate that's those awesome. people. Yeah, it's very cool. About to record with a V7 and an EM89D. Agree about the handhelds. I think Bandrew likes both of those handhelds as well. So much so that he's going to pull them out. Hey. Hey, oh, had them both. The M89D was like 25 bucks for a minute. That's nuts. That is absolute insanity. Then it went back to 50. That's how that goes. Great show. Great information. Thanks. Doing okay. Thanks. Appreciate that, Dale, the update. Any, uh, I don't want to keep you all night. I'm not in a rush either, but is there anything topic-wise you want to cover before you get sleepy from drinking decaf? Um, An exit strategy for the Middle East? I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> are you going to, are you, are you going to buy, are you going to, are you, go, are you going to buy the Tom DeLong Fender? I think I might. I think I might. So I contacted my Sweetwater guy. I said, hey, I, I need this. Surf Green set one aside. And he said, okay, probably September is when we're going to be getting them. And I said, okay, well, just let me know before you charge it because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to see a charge and freak out thinking I got hacked or something. But then I thought, ah, I don't need another guitar. But then I realized this is like my dream from high school, this Tom DeLonge Strat. And I was thinking, oh, I'll just hold off for a few years, but it's heckin' limited. Yeah, it's you another, can't wait. It's a freaking limited thing, so I can't. No. And you, yeah, you should just get it. And, and this goes hand in hand with what Michael Bauer, who's a good buddy of mine, asks, and a huge fan of you and Bronson, so on and so forth. Do you keep everything you review? I have not gotten rid of a single thing that I've covered on my channel. That's insane. I have Not even the NW700. S- no, I I have three, two NW700s. That, but that's exactly why when I did a re-review of the Samson Go mic, I was able to go pull out the Samson Go mic that I made a video on seven years ago and compare it to the one that came out that I bought six months ago. I got questions about the Samson C01U Pro, which is something I reviewed in 2015. It was sitting in a tub with some some of those those tasty treats that come with microphones that you're not supposed to eat to keep it dry. But I was able to pull it out of the box and run some tests on it. That's a much better strategy than my, oh shit, I've got to buy that mic again because, because someone <laughs> really wants to see a, a... I've owned 
Oh, I counted 11 SM7Bs is how many SM7Bs I have had in and out of this studio that were not the same SM7B because I would get an interface. I'd be like, I think this will push it. And I think I need to demonstrate that. So I will buy another one. Somebody I, says they saw barcodes. This oh, yeah. is property of podcastage 0001. The first microphone for podcastage. My current one would say zero zero eleven. <laughs> eleven. <laughs> eleven. I'd love to see both of you guys test and rate different microphones at the same time. Sadly, we're only going to talk about 90s stuff and cuss a lot if we're going to do stuff together. But <laughs> uh, these are hard, these are hard to arrange. Like that's that's another thing. Doing this stuff, doing the YouTube thing. God, it's so hard to find the time. I don't I don't know how in the world. I, I could understand if you didn't do video for Andrew Says podcast, but you do video for it. You do podcast, it's too, lots of other things, and hold down a full-time job. And I know that I've got like kids and that cuts into a lot, but I still don't understand how in the hell you do as much as you do. It doesn't really it's compute. Stupid. I have no social life. I have I don't no either, friends. But I still I have no friends around. Well, no, but you have a wife. You have kids, so you have people that you spend time with that you're yeah. obligated to spend time with. I don't. I wake up at five five thirty. I respond to comments. I go to work at six thirty. Work six thirty to four. I then start working i i eat supper so that's an hour and then i start working on videos and then i go to sleep at like nine still <laughs> and do that still. every night yeah is so it so when you're a, a is it a fulfilling single, it can be yeah okay i mean when you get to my age you start to wonder like okay well what is it all for is it just so i could acquire more money and just buy stuff for the rest of my life is that what i have been working towards and you start to question a lot of your yeah. decisions did i make the right decisions but everybody struggles with that well yeah and, well and at least you're you're doing things related to what you like yeah yeah i wasn't it's, it's a, I wasn't it's gonna a go, hobby i wasn't gonna go full ellen on you and be like banjo <laughs> when are you gonna give me grandchildren when is that gonna happen <laughs> Well, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I need to set aside some time and find a woman. Hi, Tommy. Eh, you know, it's, uh, I, I've, I've always, I've always been of the opinion and I've got friends that just, you know, have no interest in kids, marriage, none of that stuff. And it's just, yeah, I don't know, I, especially where I'm at in Ohio, it's an expectation. And I think it's the dumbest expectation of all time. To have to like live the typical American family life picket fence. Like, dude, having kids is, the, you know how hard, not to scare you off. And you probably, maybe you're past the point of where you would even want a child. But you know, it's so hard to love a, a, a human being as much. Like, it's nothing but fear. Like, fear that they're going to walk out in the street and get smashed by a semi. Fear that they're going to fall down the steps and <laughs> that's it. Like it's nothing, but it's. I mean, there's good stuff. Don't well, get me I mean, wrong. That, the I fear mean, that is insane. Sound, that sounds like that sounds like that's based on love, right? <laughs> like it if is. you didn't love them, you wouldn't care, right? And, and that's your that's your job as a father. Agreed. To, but love to ensure is they're safe. Love is hard. Is the moral of the story? And it's like some oh, people yeah. that there's some no people that want that. to avoid that toughness. Not saying that's you. <clears throat> talking in general is like I understand. You know, it's yeah, it's freaking hard, man. It is absolutely no, insanely I can, hard. I can imagine. I've I've just been relearning how to be a human since I quit drinking. It's taken me a long time. Like anybody who knows me in the real world, or like they will tell you what an incredibly awkward and oblivious person I am. I do not pick up on signals, and when I drank, I guess I was charming as hell. <laughs> I was super charming, but when I don't drink. It's just the most awkward thing ever. So <laughs> I've just been relearning how to be a normal human. I am a human being. Trust me. 
make, makes me uh all my conehead references went blank on that one i was getting ready to say something from coneheads and it just all went blank but yes gil it is all about love but at the same time it's freaking hard man life is fragile not to get all philosophical but shit's going to end at some point it's going to hurt it's going to hurt Sometimes I just want to buy a Tom DeLong Fender and just sit and play it and be happy. All you can do is do your best. Do everything within your power to ensure that your kids are are uh, safe, that they are provided for, no matter what the situation. Yeah. Still scary. Still terrifying. I can imagine. It's an ominous. Ominous, ominous, awkward silence. Are you a? There we go. Are you a Browns <laughs> looking fan for an out or a Bengals fan? Come on, chat. Well, I mean, shit. Like you're, pro- we're, we're probably opposites to this, but how? God, I sound like the the little blue star from the new Super Mario movie. How often do you think about death, or do you not think about death? Like we're not young, Andrew. Oh. Oh no, I I think about it quite a lot. I have I have gone through a lot of I've had a lot of think in the last couple of years and I'm okay with it. Yeah, what can you do? Like I don't you know, it's I like, don't want to, but I have I have come to peace with the got, fact that I will die. I, since, I am doing We made going. it. Uh, no, I'm sorry, but since we made it to the 2020s, there's a chance medical advancements could keep us alive forever. Mic review. How many mics will you have if that happens? I I will actually have a microphone museum at that point. I am oh, yeah. on board. Yeah, let's do it. Bring on the science. Let, keep me going. I got microphones to scream into. Do you want to be a liquid terminator or a solid state terminator? I'm going solid state. I don't want to. Come on. I'm liquid. I want to be a way. T1000. Heck I want to no. be a T1000. That guy was a badass. He was a dick. He was a dick, was a yeah. Dick. He was a bag of dicks, but still. Uh, Browns or Bengals fan? I'm actually a Miami Dolphins fan, but my my uh, my sports lover days are kind of over. Like they, I, I never really understood why I loved sports because I grew up a little punk ass bitch. <laughs> I was just a like I was a punk. Like everything related to me, like everything the Dead Kennedy said, everything that Bad Religion said. I was like, yeah. And then I'd be like, football's on. Woo! And it didn't make any sense. But I've I've kind of <laughs> I've kind of just died off of the sports stuff. I still watch, you know, highlights sometimes, but soccer is my new thing. I am very highly into to soccer lately. But yeah. Another reason for you to keep Apple Plus Premium Stream thing. Yeah, that whole thing. Ted Lasso and Welcome to Wrexham, which is on a different streaming service, but still. But I think they have the rights to stream MLS, don't they? Oh, I think they do. Yeah. Which is, which is, I'm a Columbus Crew fan all of a sudden over the last year. So, yeah, possibly so. Anything, last chance for questions, all that good stuff. I got philosophical. I'm going to have to go cry soon. Death is coming. It's coming for us all. If, okay. If you need a good cry... <laughs> And you and you want to, <laughs> if you want to cry over the fact that we're all going to die, go watch Grave of the Fireflies. Where's my pen? Grave. It's an an. It's one of the very few anime films I've ever seen. Oh no, I can't do it. No, no, you need to watch. Oh it. It man, is, I hate anime. I I don't sorry care Gil. for it, but it is so good. Grave of the and what? It, Grave of the Fireflies. It will break you in half. That's what I want. I want to be Jenna Jameson. That's yeah. what she said. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I really hate anime. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I'm too old. Like That's where I feel the oldest. Like Anime is huge now. Like everybody... Yeah, you know, like the the I, newest Creed movie, Creed 3. Like the guy mimicked... Uh, Michael B. Jordan mimicked the fight scenes from anime fight scenes. And it's amazing. Um, but I just, yeah, I don't know. Can't do it. I haven't seen that. I don't watch anime. I, I saw that one grave of the fireflies. I've seen Akita and I think that's it. I think I may have seen some of the, the Totoro. 
I don't know. Not my, not really my cup of tea. Different language. Final destination. Thumbs up or down? I give it thumbs up all the way. I love those movies. Thumbs up. Anything with Tony Todd in it, I am going to be a fan of. And I like Devin. Tony Saul. Todd is incredible. Devin saw what he he was the teen heartthrob. Yeah, he was. He was up he there was, with a uh, Justin Taylor Thomas, Jonathan Taylor Jonathan Thomas. Taylor Thomas. Yes, and those guys were always on those teen magazines. <laughs> And he took like to 20 bring it back to the nineties. He had like 20 hits of acid in his pocket and got sprayed. And it was just the most fun thing to see. Yeah. UFOs. And we're going to do speed round UFOs and aliens. Fact or fiction fact for me. Fact. But as far as them visiting earth, I think fiction. Why? The distances. In- unless the aliens are just pan dimensional beings who are who are coming down from different dimensions and they're not traveling space, they're traveling dimensions, then okay. But as far as an alien species from 10,000 light years away, I don't, I don't think that's possible. At least based on what we know. Maybe we're just stupid and we don't understand the science, which is more than likely, especially for me. Yeah. But, but, but if what they're saying is even a fraction true, like the whistleblower talking about reverse engineering like can we really reverse engineer that if just no grave of the fireflies is amazing says when people's i'm sorry i do hate anime i just can't help it i do not like it it just doesn't compute with me at all uh this is all ancient anime they are here shopping of mics the aliens are shopping for mics yes and I think they would pick the Aston element if they were going to choose one. Absolutely. That would Absolutely. be Absolutely. All right. I think we're good. I think B- Bandrew's bedtime is in approximately <laughs> an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, we're at it. You actually hit it right on the head. <laughs> I'm going to go drink my second cup of decaf and put on my PJs. And pop in mall rats. Pop in mall rats. Heck yeah. Yeah. You fucker. <laughs> now you can think of that every time anyone does anything that requires that response fly fat man fly <laughs> it's for brody <sighs> god that movie is so stupid but so good that's what makes so many movies good it's just the slapstick ridiculousness it's great thank you, you guys what there is no Easter Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Clerks 3 yet. Have you? Yes, I have. I bought it on DVD and I own the digital with, copy. With, where, 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 where are we at on the, the thumb scale? I, I would say slightly positive. I think it's a fitting end to the... Okay. Uh, that's good. To the trilogy. It's not it's not something that I'm thinking I need to rewatch this over and over and over again like Clerks or Clerks 2. Clerks 2 I watched probably the second most I love of any it. Kevin Smith movie. Yeah. But it's not going to give you that. But it's a it's a nice movie. I'm glad to hear someone else like Clerks 2 that much cuz I I feel like it's massively underrated. I loved it. Yeah. It's it's, it's all did, about I dialogue didn't. with those movies and the dialogue's fantastic. Yeah, I, I didn't get the original Clerks until I saw Clerks 2. And then I went back and watched oh. Clerks and I was like, oh, I get it. I yeah. get it now. Okay. Now I get it. I definitely saw Clerks, which I'm a few years older than you, but I saw Clerks pretty close to release. I no, I, I saw Clerks in in high school. So oh, okay. I saw okay. I thought you saw Clerks 2 first. I saw Mallrats. I just didn't understand it. I didn't get the appeal of it. Okay. I was turned off by the fact that it was black and white. Yeah. I wanted the bright colors. I'm young and dumb. And <laughs> that sentence there. <laughs> In my head, it was <laughs> talk. I think I know where you were going with it. Did you just leave a few words off the end of that young? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're good. We're good. We're on the same page. <laughs> yep. Thank you guys for watching. That's the last I thing. Ba- Andrew, Andrew's not fucking up anymore this stream. I can tell you that. He's. <laughs> I will take no more of this debauchery from him. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Mark. <sighs> this was a blast. Yep. 
I kind of had a feeling it would be just because, you know, it, it can't be about audio all the time, folks. We'll throw it in a little yeah. bit, but for God's sakes, let us be humans. <sighs> yeah. Let it, let us be humans. Please. Yes. I, I want me to I want me to be one of the videos where like did you see his eyes go lizard? I want to be that guy. That was pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm impressed. Yeah, I'm a lizard person. I'm not surprised. Yeah, it happens. I'm here to bring the debauchery. Thank you guys. We appreciate it. Uh yeah. A few people said love to see it again. Who knows? You might, but we'll have to clean up our act before we do so. Yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you for having me and uh, subscribe to Obscure Mics. Well, thanks. Appreciate that. Subscribe to podcasts as if you weren't all fucking ready. <laughs> 300K and growing. All right. I'm done with the 90s references. Andrew, I'll see you later. Have a good night of sleep. Absolutely, we'll talk, Bark. We'll, we'll talk 90s movies again later. Everybody, thank you. Appreciate it. Fantastic. Bye-bye. Peace out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.